Hello everyone, welcome back. I've seen many YouTubers talk about the state of PvP in Destiny 2 lately. Some claim that Crucible for them is just yet another unpleasant step towards whatever quest they want to achieve, yet others will spend the majority of their time in the Crucible seemingly enjoying it. And then there is a tiny percentage of those who draw our attention to the fact that there is indeed a worse playlist than the Crucible. I thought I'd get on that hype train and give you my thoughts on what makes the Crucible unfun. But before you click off this video, let me emphasize that what I'll say isn't as simple as hey nerf grenade launchers or delete Geomax from PvP. The keyword for today's video is degeneracy. This is not a word to insult opposing players. This is merely a phenomenon in the game which strongly contributes to the frustration of every single player regardless of the activity at hand or the loot to be gained. To explain it to you in full detail, however, I'll have to share a bit of my expertise in mass, of course adapted for the average gamer. Today we'll learn something together. More precisely, we'll take a look at the most elementary building block of game theory. Yes, mathematicians enjoy gaming themselves, as you can tell by my channel existing, you know. Don't worry, this won't include clavy calculations or abstract algebra, and what I'll explain to you is very simple, visual, and intuitive. But you have to promise me that you'll sit through the tiny lecture. It'll help us later understand one of the most frustrating elements of Destiny 2. You promise? Okay, good, get ready. Here's the setup. Imagine that you and I are sitting at a table and that there are, say, 20 coins on the table. I'll draw these coins as red circles on the screen for simplicity's sake. Here are the rules of the game. We'll take turns removing coins from the table. The rule is that on our turn we're allowed to remove one, two, or three coins from the table. No more, no less, and no skipping turn. Whichever player is left with an empty table and cannot pick up any more coins loses the game. Equivalently, whoever picks up the last coin is the winner. Since you're my guest, you're allowed to go first. Let's take a look at how this game might go down. Hey, nice, you won. R nicely done. Very straightforward, right? By the way, this game I've just explained to you is known in the math literature as the NIM game. NIM is actually an archaic English word. It's a verb and it means something like to steal. Quite a fitting name, actually. Now, let me ask you the following question. Would you enjoy playing the NIM game? Sure, this game might seem boring or less engaging to you, but let's say you could get trials loot from getting wins in the NIM game. Would you rather play this, or would you go into a legitimate trials match, potentially with three Chaos Reach Warlocks on the enemy team, or even cheaters? For now, we know what our opponent's strategies might be in Trials of Osiris. Let us think about the strategy I could employ in our little game against you. Now, because I'm not a pro YouTuber yet, I won't drag this out for more ad revenue. Let me just show you the most sinister strategy I could use. Let's order these coins in 5 rows of 4 each, so 4 times 5 is 20, which checks out. And there is nothing special about any of these coins, so we can assume that they are being taken in reading order. So let's say your first turn you take some number of coins. The rule said that you are required to take 1, 2 or 3 coins, so for sure you'll only be taking from the first row. And here comes my counter strategy. All that I need to do is take the remainder of the coins in the same row by mirroring whatever you take. If you take one coin, I take three. If you take two, I also take two. And if you take one, I'll take the remaining three. This is the mirror strategy, and it is a degenerate strategy. Its effect is that every one of my moves will leave one row of coins less on the table. Most importantly, when it comes down to one row only, it will be on my turn that the last row is removed. 
Whatever you play, however smart your strategy, I can keep removing one row at a time all the way down to just one row remaining. And then I'll be certain that I will win, since there'll always be coins for me to take, but not for you. The idea behind the Nim game can be generalized, but this is not the point of my video. Mathematicians call the Nim game solved, because its outcome is known before it's even played out. Whoever plays first in this game will lose. If you're the one starting, thanks to the availability of the mirror strategy, you have already lost. If we randomly assign the starting player, we're essentially randomly giving away wins and losses. The Nim game is a frustrating game for the first player, since they know that no matter how skillful they are, or how well they play, their loss is guaranteed. It's also not particularly fun for the second player, since the winning strategy is so easy to execute that it takes a very marginal amount of skill. To be more explicit, the name game is equivalent to the simple idea of flipping a coin. Let me quickly summarize what we've learned. A solved game is a game in which you know the outcome before it's played out. When a game is solved, this means that one of the players has access to a degenerate strategy. A degenerate strategy is not just strong or annoying, it's devastating. By rendering the majority, or in our extreme case, all opposing strategies completely fruitless, a degenerate strategy reduces the entire depth of the game to the execution of a winning algorithm. If the starting player is randomly chosen, then the game is a gamble, essentially. Remember this, it's going to be very useful. Okay, class is dismissed, let's get back to Destiny 2. What follows is an opinion piece from yours truly. I don't think that the idea of the Nim game and why it solves is up for debate. If you need more cl clarifications, I guess Wikipedia could help. But in the following, I'll be t talking about where I see solved minigames in Destiny. Of course, here you're perfectly entitled to your opinion, and you're welcome to try and sway my opinion in the comment section below. As you could probably guess, in my mind, the critical problem of many of Destiny 2's playlists is that they are solved. Playlist strikes represent minigames which are solved almost by design. Equip Serenity Goal, and some rocket launcher, and go to town. Heck, most of the bosses are so squishy, you might as well DPS them with the Trinity Goal. How many people play playlist strikes because they're fun? Not a lot. Maybe they are fun while you're a new player trying out various weapons and testing your builds, but that's about all playlist strikes can offer. The outcome of a playlist strike is exactly determined before you even play it. It's just a tiny waste of time, the execution of one of many winning algorithms, combined with gambling for loot at the end. The amount of time you waste is mostly determined by whether you get Lake of Shadows or The Corrupted. Sure, you might argue, ah, speedrunning takes skill and is engaging, and so forth. But these strikes are so easy that you would be only trimming seconds of what a low effort run with simple Trinity Goal could achieve. Now, I'm not saying one should nerf Trinity Goal or make strikes harder. My point is just that strikes are like a testing ground, a blueprint of PvE, which is perfectly well understood and trivially easy to play through. But strikes are very boring, they are not engaging, and nobody in their right mind would enjoy playing playlist strikes if you neglect potential rewards at the end. The solution to strikes comes from the fact that they are too easy. But the phenomenon of a solved minigame isn't unique to easy content. For example, Grandmaster Nightfalls are mostly solved too. The AI, or the combatants as they're known in-game, are so strong that they rendered the absolute majority of player strategies invalid. Of course, we, the players, have access to the ultimate degenerate strategy, which you can tell by the fact that it's possible to succeed in a Grandmaster Nightfall. However, this involves a crazy amount of passive play, very specific loadouts, and all around an incredible time investment. The well-known algorithm you need to execute to win in a GM Nightfall is boring, extremely long, and very easy to mess up. This, in my opinion, is the key reason why GM Nightfalls are extremely frustrating for the majority of players who play it. Another example of solved minigames are so-called cheese mechanics in raids. 
Now, I'm not the only one who has cheated Riven or who has exploited the Atheon cheese to get easy loot. I get it. People want loot and they want it fast. So do I. However, be honest to yourself. Were you ever excited about nuking Riven? Maybe outside the first time you did it. Just like it's not fun to execute a highly complex algorithm, it's not really fun to execute a trivial one either. The playlist Gambit also allows for degenerate strategies, mostly Eyes of Tomorrow and Invading. It starts with a gamble of getting the first invasion portal open, then you invade, launch Eyes of Tomorrow, and wipe the enemy team. There is very little the opponents can do against a first invade with such a powerful heavy weapon. But now, returning to the actual topic of this video, the Crucible. It's not nearly as easy to solve the Crucible as strikes are. At first glance, besides cheating, there are no strategies which will guarantee you a free win. But I don't think that this is the case, and herein lies the problem. I agree that these extreme winning strategies are rare occurrences in low to medium skill brackets. However, the more skilled you get, the higher up in the skill ladder you move, the more common and common strategies become which are equivalent to the mirror strategy in the NIM game. To identify a degenerate strategy, all you need to do is think about two things. Is it genuinely possible to execute whatever algorithm would be needed for it consistently? And how many counter options are there? Think about it. How do you intend on playing against this and this times three, denying you every engagement and waiting to get their super first, assuming sufficient skill level? You don't have all too many choices. Hey, another idea. How do you plan on playing against this and this times six in a control match, assuming sufficient skill level? One strategy which I personally don't consider to be too badly degenerate is the Saitan's Rampart. While the idea of being able to shoot at your opponents without them being able to shoot back might look extremely strong, and believe me it is, there are at least two good counter options. Glacier Grenades and Bastion. Certainly the Saitan's Ramparts are crazy strong, but at least they admit counterplay. Similarly, the other side of this coin is that the Saitan's Ramparts are a legitimate counter to sniper rifle, which is why I don't consider sniper rifles as an all too degenerate strategy by themselves. In this case, balance is a separate discussion which I won't get into now. Some YouTubers might argue that snipers are extremely overpowered in the meta, but remember, the question we are asking is whether a strategy allows any counterplay options, not whether it's annoying or very strong. Nonetheless, at the top levels of play, there are many degenerate strategies which usually involve either farming some incredibly strong ability or status effect, like the Whisper of Rhyme on the Titan, or they involve just waiting for your super ability in the corner of the map. These winning strategies are extremely difficult to play against on the one side, but also they are extremely unengaging to pull off on the other side. If you stay away from the winning strategies, well, you will lose to them. If you opt to follow the community's advice and to adapt, then you're stuck playing an extremely long and boring strategy, and in the meantime, your beard might grow two inches longer. Don't make any mistake, no amount of getting good will allow you to beat a degenerate strategy, provided a sufficiently skilled team to execute the requirements of the degenerate strategy correctly. By definition, if a degenerate strategy is executed correctly, there are next to no counterplay options for you. Skill or no skill, you'll either have to use the degenerate strategy yourself and gamble, or you will lose. Forget about balance, forget about loot incentive, as long as degenerate strategies in the crucible exist and counter options are lacking, it will remain an unfun mode. Understand that a degenerate strategy removes all incentive to grow as a player or to develop one's skills. It turns the crucible with all its awesome gunplay, fun team setup possibilities, and interesting playmaking potential into an infuriating waiting game and algorithm execution chore. Just like the second player in our NIM game cannot develop their skill further to get them better chances of winning, you cannot develop your skill further to win against a degenerate strategy in the Crucible. The loot is the cherry on the cake, but before we get the cherry, we need the cake. 
the generous strategy, they are melting a cake and they have to go. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.